When are we getting the dogs and the cats right, and, and all the, the llamas things. and... When are we getting the llamas? Good morning, beautiful people. It is a new year and we decided we're going to start it off with Q&A. We haven't done this in a long time and we get various questions over the year. So we were like, you know what? Let's start off the new year with a couple mm -hmm. answered questions and then we'll get back to our regularly scheduled well not regular schedule not but regular. whatever <laughs> you know what i mean there are a lot of questions that we get on a pretty regular basis yeah. and if we took the time to answer questions in every video every video would be a q a it video. would so it would. we're gonna take the time and answer yeah. a few of those questions yeah uh, we cannot get through all of them but a lot of them are repeats yeah. and We'll just, we'll do what we can. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a good one to start out with is a lot of people asked, uh, we put it out to you guys on, on our YouTube community channel, a lot of people asked what our plans for the new year are um, in their sub questions or like garden, any new animals, plans for the homestead, garden, animal life. So garden, we really want to focus on, you know, getting garden operating better. Right. Uh, last year, I feel like we... I mean, we did all right, yeah. but because I was working on this place, yeah. I kind of just dropped it. Right. And you were pregnant with her and Very pregnant. couldn't get out there. And so everything we planted just kind of went to weeds. We couldn't really keep up with it because I was working on this place. Yeah. And, uh, oh, is that okay. how it went? Yeah, that's about yeah, how it went, actually. that's about actually. how it went. <laughs> <laughs> but we still pulled some tomatoes. And yeah, we got we our got sweet potatoes. You all saw sweet, sweet potatoes, potatoes, tomatoes, uh, loofahs. Like yeah, we did get loofahs. I had saved seeds, and somehow one seed wound up in my jacket yes. pocket, and it was oh, just nice. some random day. I was walking down past, and I had my hands in my pocket of my jacket, and I was like, "Hey, a loofah seed!" And I stuck it in the dirt. Yeah. And that plant did <laughs> amazing. We got so many loofahs from that one. Uh, as far as animals, I don't know if we want to get. You know different really kinds of different animals. kinds yeah. we've talked about goats we'd kind of like to get goats but mainly this year we're working on infrastructure yes. we need this perimeter a... fences we need fences we need gates and right. you name it because we need to be able to if we get animals we need to be able to keep them right on our property especially goats if we yeah, get especially goats. goats so probably not any animals other than you know the normal chickens and pigs right and turkeys i mean and we're kind of tapped out on chickens right now like we're good on chickens we're good on we're chickens drowning in eggs which is a great problem to have and then if we were to get any more pigs it would probably be like maybe a few feeder pigs. We'll, we'll need some feeder pigs because uh guinea hogs grow really slow yeah. those are the black ones they're at a year right now and i'd say they're probably at like 100 100 pounds maybe yeah the mangalitsas we got them as a breeding pair and so far no baby pigs so we'll see we're not sure if Bubbles can figure it out. Yeah, or not. yeah Bubbles has got to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, uh, and Lamb Chump ain't really having it, so yeah. <laughs> we'll see what happens she, there. She's not ready. Yeah, but you know that was the plan. We could get you know our own supply right. of piglets coming, but in the meantime, we're gonna have to get some feeder pigs yeah. just so we can keep in meat. Yeah, we've done pretty good this past year with putting chicken in the freezer. Yes. Deer in the freezer. Yes. Pork in the freezer. Oh. We've done pretty good in that department. Yeah. We would like to be a little bit better. You right. know, have a little bit more pork in the freezer and stuff Yeah, like, that. like we've realized, like, we're almost through that pig we butchered two, three months ago. Mm -hmm. So obviously we're going to need more more pigs in our life to cover what we would like either, to have. Either more pigs or bigger pigs. Cause right. Because a 200 pound pig doesn't last very long. No. Like you said, this year is infrastructure. Yep. Last year was kind of like learning and getting our basics mm -hmm. down and we've just spent the year seeing where we tend to be on the property mm -hmm. and how things work and weather and yeah. water and all that. This year will be, okay, well we know where all those places are, so let's park stuff. As far as projects go, there's still a few things I have to do, like I need to build the deck, I need to put the the underpinning right uh just stuff like that we're insulated underneath yeah like all the water lines are insulated so we haven't had a problem no even down into the teens like right. we've been fine it's been good but i would kind of like you know to have it finished it's yeah. just one of those things it's non-functional right now it's purely cosmetic right so we'll just 
we'll do that before we do the decks. Right. But, you know, I also would like the decks because it would be nice to have a deck to sit on out here and, yeah. you know, barbecue. So in the realm of projects, some people have asked if we have any big projects coming up. So our next big project that we're planning is to do a, like a, it's not a lean-to. Uh, I'm going to build... Just, a roofing just, just call it a, a lean-to yeah. on the barn yeah. uh, out in front of the door. We're going to build a space big enough to where we can butcher out of the rain or sunshine. Yeah. A place where I could work that's not in the barn. Right. Some place with a you know, high ceiling. Yeah. Maybe something I could put a, a gantry crane on for doing pigs. Right. You know, something like that. We're going to build a structure, attach it to the barn, just a great big 10-foot high roof essentially yeah. next that's our next one. that's that's gonna happen soonish because yeah. it wouldn't it's not gonna be very expensive to build just a lean-to right that one's coming up mm -hmm. there's a lot of dirt work i've got to do around the barn to get water to you know run away from the barn <laughs> rather right than to it the barn? yeah but yeah that one's that one's coming up pretty quick all right how is life in your rebuilt mobile home i forget it's a mobile home yeah uh it's quite comfy. It is. Uh, those mini splits work so good. So good. Oh, we've stayed roasty toasty in yeah, here. Very comfortable. Uh, no, it's been really nice in here. It has. Uh, it's, it's not the RV. No. <laughs> but it's not a full size house. No. But, like uh, I'm, I'm digging it. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. It'll work for now. Yeah, it's it's good. On that note, a lot of people ask about like sleeping arrangements and where all the kids sleep. It's very interesting to me why people are so curious about sleeping arrangements for our, our children. I don't know why. I guess it's something that's never really occurred to me. Like wherever people's kids sleep doesn't matter to me, yeah. I guess. But I can see how it would be curious because we are a large family in a tiny space. Mm -hmm. So all four boys have their own room. You guys know that. And they have bunks. So it's, it's two on the top, two on the bottom. Um, and they... Fought amongst themselves. One on top, one on bottom, one on top, one on bottom. Yeah, but I mean, two on top and two on If you go across the room, it's two on top and two on bottom. <laughs> and Buggy sleeps with us. Our babies sleep with us in our room for a period of time until they're ready to. It's usually that. until they can, like, get up and, yeah. you know, do stuff. Usually within the first year, they move out. But because we do have such a tiny space, she'll probably stay with us a little bit mm -hmm. longer, which is fine with us. I mean, we don't mind. Yeah. She has a corner. As far as like what we're gonna do, we might add on another bedroom yeah. back there off the boys' bedroom. Right. Uh, we've talked about it. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah, you know, I it's, mean we're not it, quite there. I know it goes fast. It goes fast, but it's just like Our it's situation. not that big of a deal right now. No, it's working for us. We're all comfortable, mm -hmm. and I mean it works. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. <clears throat> Will you ever have a pet on the homestead? We have lots of pets. <laughs> I think me, people mean like a dog or. When cat. are we getting the dogs and the cats right, and, and all the, the llamas things. and? When are we getting the llamas? I didn't know that was uh, an option. When we can find the right dog, we will get a dog. Yes. But when you have a wee baby that is taking all of your extra attention, no. ain't nobody got time for that. I do not have the brain space for a dog, so it's just. It's one of those, we've had dogs in the past. We've had very bad luck we've with dogs. We've had very bad luck with dogs. So we are going to need to put a lot of time and effort in training a dog. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, we don't have the brain space for that. Yep. Cats will probably happen at some point because cats are fairly easy. You just kind of like, you know. Well, I, I almost had cats a couple weeks ago. One of the neighbor's uh, barn cats had kittens. and eh. Okay. <laughs> I'm curious about Bumblewood and Ben's knife making business. Uh, what are your plans all are with all of that? So originally, when like I started talking about you know Renegade Metalworks and doing all the stuff, I had full intentions of cranking out knives right. and doing stuff. And then this place became the priority, and I honestly. I hadn't set foot in the barn for six to eight months, something yeah. like that, while I was working on this. The only reason I would go down there was to use my equipment to make something, and then it was just like, you know, mess up to here of yeah. various projects that never got cleaned up. Yeah. And, well, I have been down there pretty much the whole month of December. I have got everything cleaned up. I'm starting to work again. Actually, right now, I'm pretty sore because I'm <laughs> like getting back into blacksmithing yeah. and swinging hammers. So it's been a minute. It's been a minute. 
but it feels good. I'm not gonna say, yeah, I'm gonna get back to it and start cranking out knives because life is so different here. It is. There's yeah. so much more to do. I'm sure as it warms up and garden season takes over, then my time in the barn will kind of diminish. Yeah. And that's fine. Uh, ain't cool. nobody wanna, nobody wants to stand in front of a hot forge when it's, you know, 95 no. degrees and humid. No, it's one of those, when they're available, mm -hmm. we'll tell you guys. Until then, we don't really want to give a timeline. Yeah. Same for my soaps, obviously, tiny baby. Um, with the boys, Munchie was one when I started the business and I had been making soap since he was like six months old. He was so easy. I could put him down and do things and start a business and it wasn't a big deal. I kind of assumed it would be this way with her and it's not. It's not. You put it's her really down not. and she screams like oh a banshee. Oh my goodness. And she it's just... not even crying. It's just screaming. Yes. She is the loudest little baby we have ever had. She really is, which is kind of hilarious because it's a girl, but I'm sure all the girl moms are going to be like, yeah, that's how it is. So again, not going to give you guys a timeline. I'm hoping for spring, but it just kind of depends on make no promises she, make no promises but we're getting better we're starting to get in a bit of a rhythm mm -hmm. with her um trying to get her on like a nap schedule that kind of thing so well, we're getting there it's coming are y'all gonna start vlogging again like at least once a week we're trying yo yeah like we're like, trying we took off december we're gonna try to get back into a at least twice a week like we did in in like october november mm -hmm. um that seems to work fairly well for us the struggle is, I used to do all the filming and editing for the first, I think, three years. Mm -hmm. Last year, you picked up the filming because you were doing all the stuff mm -hmm. and it worked out really well. I still do the editing. So, again, with the child who is very needy, which I don't mind. I mean, I love snuggling her. It just makes it difficult for editing because I don't yeah. have my hands free. Yeah. So, we're just trying to find the right balance of schedule and, yep. and where it fits in. So. We'll get there. It's getting easier. I know it's it's hard when for YouTube especially when most YouTubers have a set schedule. We post on this day, this day, and this day. Yeah. We're not in there. We have learned to kind of just go with the flow of life because it ebbs and flows and it's up and down. And I mean, we have been in seasons where we've tried to kill ourselves sticking to a schedule, and that's when you burn out. We start going downhill yeah. and burning out. So we have learned it kind of is what it is and take it as it comes. Yep. What is the project you have yet to do but are dreaming of doing? Chinese greenhouse. Yes. I have wanted to do a Chinese greenhouse ever since I learned what they were. Yes. We've got the spot picked out. Like mm -hmm. we know how we're gonna build it. It's just. Oh, there's some other things that need to be in place There's first. so many other things we gotta do before we can do it. Yeah. But that's the project I'm looking forward yes. to. Yes. I'm also looking forward to a shop. We are planning to where the chicken shed is. Rip that. We're gonna rip that rotten thing rotten down. Rotten thing down, and planning on putting a decent shop, which will be a shop for both of us. Mm -hmm. One side will be a, stu a soap studio. I can work on a slab again. Yes, something flat that doesn't flood. That's yeah, yeah, and like has doors and windows and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, but that's a later project because we have to like save up for it yeah. and you know get that all prepped so but those are i think the two like big projects that we're looking forward to looking really looking forward to are you starting seeds yet no no we are not uh i don't have the space really to start seeds i have chicken seeds all over my counter those are eggs. chicken seeds it's eggs it's there chicken are chicken seeds, seeds. <laughs> That's what's taking up the space on my counter. Um, we don't really have an easy place to put seeds right now. And I think with last year, the way it was, and then just trying to get the garden ready this year, we're just going to like rototill and plant, rototill and plant, rototill and plant. <laughs> Pretty much. So I might start a few tomatoes maybe. We've got a few flats. We could fit a few flats in here. Somewhere. Uh, somewhere. It's just like there's life in here, so yeah. it's not easy to move life around to make room for seeds. So, is Ben going to make Sasquatch knives? See, now we're getting into the realm of cutting apart a vehicle that mechanically is still fine. It is. Like, I could drive that wrecked truck. There's one thing I have to fix. Like, a brake line got smashed. Yeah, but and the one the back wheel is kind of. Put the yeah. spare on. Right. But. Like, I have to fix a brake line, and then 
essentially the vehicle's drivable. Right. Like I could drive it around with, you know, it all smashed up. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff we've talked about doing with it. Am I going to cut apart a functional vehicle and make knives? No. Probably not. Um, no. I mean, we did talk about it originally. We did talk but... about it. But, you know, really the only thing you can use are the leaf springs. Yeah. Like, there's no other real good metal for making knives not out really, of. Like, no. So, no, it... Probably not. Probably not. We have gotten a lot of questions about the kids. Like, a lot, a lot, a lot of questions about the kids. Um, and we will address this again, just because I feel like it's important. It's usually about once a year we have to address this. Yeah. Obviously, the kids are part of our life and part of our homestead, and um, they do chores and, you know, various things around the homestead with us. We don't show them too much for a couple reasons. One... A little bit of privacy mm -hmm. um, just for internet you know how it is but sometimes they don't want to be on camera and we respect that for our children um, our, our, our twins are early teenagers like yeah. they're gonna be 14 here in a couple months yeah they're entering that stage of life where you know privacy is a thing yeah and we respect that I remember what it was like to be mm -hmm. 13 14 and I didn't like having a camera in my face yeah. So, we respect that. Right. I think it's important to remember that if you want a child to learn how to be respectful of other people, you have to be respectful of them. If they don't want to be on camera, I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to force them to be on camera just like we don't force them to, like, butcher animals. Right. It's part of our family. They know that. They mm -hmm. know that this is our, our life. We do YouTube. We like to share it, but we're not going to force them to do it, and we like to keep their privacy. Um, lots of people have asked us to film, like, homeschooling and stuff like that. I'm not going to do that because that's distracting for them. Mm. Having a camera in their face while they're supposed to be doing schoolwork is, like, that's just asking for trouble. Sometimes it's hard enough to get them to concentrate on school as it is. Um, so we, the reason we keep our kids kind of in the background is because that's important to us. Mm -hmm. I know people are really interested in our kids and we appreciate that and that's cool, but just remember that we have certain boundaries in our family um, that we've just set and yep. we're, we're cool with keeping them that way. Yep. Okay, here's one kind of going back to animals. How are your hens, or how are your animals doing? And then they ask what kind of laying hens we have. We have all kinds of laying hens. I don't even know we, what uh, kind that we have at this point. We did McMurray. <laughs> it's just, a mix. It's a mix yeah. of brown eggs, green eggs, uh, like really lighter chocolate, brown, yeah. like <clears throat> Blues. beautiful eggs. And so that was what we did in the spring. And yeah. they're all laying now. And we God, have, so pretty. it's like, you know, Instagram egg basket yeah. right there. So we um, have some Morans. We've got some Americanas. We've got some, I think we have some Whitings, the uh, blue Whitings. Um, and then from our previous chickens, we have um, Australorps, Leghorns. I gotta remember them all. We have so many. We yeah, for we, a long time we were the home of wayward chickens. Like if you had a chicken that needed a new home, we we had to shut our doors to wayward chickens we did. because we are literally sitting at about sixty-five chickens right now. Something like that. Yeah. Like we get usually about two dozen eggs a day. We don't eat two dozen. I mean, sometimes we do, but <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard to keep up. Right yeah. Now. Uh, as far as the other animals, the pigs are doing great. Pigs are doing great. I just moved them yesterday morning. Uh, they had where we've got them. They had ended up diverting water by oh, yes. rooting. And so where their shelter was, they had not on purpose had diverted water off the hill and turned their entire house into just a mud hole. Yeah. And I came walking out Sunday morning. We had had a whole bunch of rain. <laughs> and these pigs come out, and they're no longer black. Yeah, they're, they're, they're brown like pigs. brownish, reddish <laughs> pigs. <laughs> it's cold, and they're muddy. Yeah. They, they didn't seem too upset. No. But so, yeah, I moved them and yeah. got them out of the mud, got them onto dry ground. But yeah. Yeah, you guys will be seeing more. Everybody's yeah. doing pretty good. They're doing pretty good. I think the only um, bummer is we did lose our male turkey, that because you, you had saved. The I, I had saved a couple of these, uh, three of these turkeys for uh, possible breeding. Possible breeding stock. I was gonna try it. Well, of course, the, the male. The male yeah. had liver failure and died. We're pretty sure. That's uh, what we're it pretty was. sure that's yeah. what it was. So bummer. So now the other two females, we're just gonna put them in the freezer mm -hmm. when we have a minute. Uh, what have you learned about each other during this time of homesteading and the renewing of your relationship? Be careful what I, what I <laughs> answer that with. 
Uh, it's never too late to say sorry. Uh, the battle is never over. <laughs> oh, that's how it is. <laughs> no, um, I don't know. Is this uh, about a homestead question or is this a relationship question? They ask about it specifically homesteading, but we have, like, our relationship has been changing since we left California. Mm -hmm. um, just lots of healing and, and working on it. I feel like on the homestead specifically, we're kind of getting back into our normal roles of like, I'm in the kitchen more and homekeeping and feeding and that kind of thing. And you're out, you know, working, working. and doing the thing. So we're kind of getting back into that, mm -hmm. which is how we like it anyway. Yeah. Like we've always worked best when we are doing the things we enjoy doing. Yeah. Um, I enjoy working yeah. and doing <laughs> this stuff. This is the work that really speaks to me. Yeah. It's been weird being here and now I can, I can do homestead stuff. Like I can work outside. I have always enjoyed that. Yeah. And now like this winter's here and I'm in the barn working on knives and stuff like that. Uh, it's not as fun as it used to be. Really? Like, it's, it's weird. When the I, knife work is not yeah, as fun. The, yeah. When I was in a shop every day, all I really wanted to do was be outside. Well, now that I'm not in a shop every day and I can be outside, I think I enjoy being outside. Yeah the most. You always have. Uh, this is a quick one. Somebody asked about our fruit trees. Have we had any problems with deer or any other animals wanting to chew or eat them? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. We do have deer. and We have seen some evidence of deer closer to our orchard. They, uh, they only come around when it's not legal to shoot them. Of course. Isn't that how it is everywhere? So we will probably be putting some kind of protective things around we our actually last night we sat down with a uh, drone shot of the property yeah. and we uh started just you know scribbling doodling yeah. doodling um we're gonna probably eventually eventually fence where the orchard yeah. is just in like a deer fence i mean a deer fence will keep out all but the most determined deer right so far we have not had anything come up and munch trees yeah i but, mean you know it's winter so there's no yeah. leaves on them right now i did check the trees a, a day or two ago just to make sure there's not any mm -hmm. like nibbles on the trees themselves um i think there's just enough foliage around here elsewhere to keep them busy mm -hmm. more cooking please okay i mean we'll try <laughs> throw that in with our vlogging see that was something we used to enjoy showing yeah was us all cooking. of our food and it's been so hard to find like a like a rhythm of what we're filming and right. what we're showing. Uh, I think what works for us is we just kind of show what we're doing day to day. Yeah. Like, this is a family vlog. It is. It's not necessarily all homesteading or, and we are not a how-to channel for, no. by any stretch. <laughs> no. So, uh, yeah, we'll probably add some more cooking. Yeah, throw some, now that I'm getting back in the kitchen, and have, I kinda, I'm getting my brain back after being pregnant, and, you know, the, the fourth trimester with the tiny baby. <laughs> It's uh, it's been kind of nice just getting back in the kitchen and doing what you like to be oh, outside. Oh, and... it's, it's been nice. <laughs> you enjoying it? I'm That's enjoying good. it. Somebody said they live in SoCal and I'm wondering how you are adapting to the change in the climate, allergies, weather, all that kind of stuff. Where we were in California was in the bottom of the Central Valley, which was covered in smog. It is gorgeously beautiful and easy to breathe out here. That's my big yep, thing. That, that it's pretty like, much sums it up. We walk outside and we see beautiful blue sky instead of brown sky. Uh, every single summer in the Central Valley, every single summer for the past decade, I have had nosebleeds every summer yeah. by about August. And out here, I'm like, it's January and my knuckles aren't cracked yeah. and bleeding from the dry. Yeah. Like, it's... We actually right. really enjoy the humidity. Yeah, we like the is, humidity. Most people are like, oh my gosh, how can you live out there? It's so humid. It's uh, We really enjoy it. It's quite nice. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, nothing really that bad. The summers are a little bit less hot than California. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, but you balance it with the humidity. So they're probably about the same. It, the thing that traveling across the country taught me is in summertime, it doesn't matter where you are, it's hot. It's hot. <laughs> and in wintertime, it's cold. Yeah. You know, varying degrees of cold, but, you know, once it's below freezing, it's cold. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's pretty much everywhere you go. Right. So, <clears throat> uh, the difference between there and here, it's colder here, but we have... We have four seasons. Yeah. We didn't have four seasons. Yeah. It's been very, very nice yeah. to enjoy the seasons. 
I did see some questions <clears throat> of how did you work up the courage to do mm, this? Yeah. You know, how did you, <laughs> how did you like figure this out? I and think it, we it, get, that's our biggest email. Yeah. Is how do I do the same thing? To that, like we've got videos talking about that, but we can reiterate before we wrap this up. Yeah. This is getting kind of long. It is getting kind of long. Um, if this is something you are wanting to pursue, uh, what we tell everybody and I don't think people quite get it, is we sold everything we had. Yes. We sold everything. Like, we were like, on board 100% to change our life. We were your typical suburban family, mm -hmm. two cars, the house, like, all of it. Yeah. And first we decided that we were going to do this. We had a very serious discussion of, hey, do you, do you want to get out of here? Right. Do you want to go travel? All this stuff. And... When we agreed, it was like, okay, well, how do we do this? Um, we had worked really hard at paying off debt. Yeah. And ultimately, I think that's what allowed us to do this is because we had paid off so much of our house. Mm -hmm. We owned our vehicles. And let's be realistic. That took us almost two years to do. Yeah. It was before, long before we had chosen to leave California, but when we chose to pay off the debt, we sat down and we got hardcore about it, and it took us well, about... Well, gosh, we'd been, we'd been in that house nine years, and we had been paying off debt for nine years. Yeah. Like, people don't understand, if you want to do something, start bettering your life now. Right. And it might take time. It might take time. Um, we had been paying on debt for nine years yeah. you know we didn't go out and get loans for stuff we did we got rid of our credit cards right. uh, you know we were debt free all but for the house and I got the gimmies and I went and bought a truck yeah and then when it was time to leave I had to go sell that truck I think I sold it to one of the car yeah places and you know they gave they give you pennies on the dollar for it right. and that hurt yeah you know it was my dream truck and yeah I had to go I had to get rid of it yeah. just so we could leave. Right. And, but that's part of it. If you want this kind of life, if you want out, you can get out. Yeah. But there's going to be a pound of flesh required. There really is. I think you have to realize that you can't stay comfortable. You can't stay yeah. comfortable <laughs> and want change at the same time. Yeah. You have to come out of your comfort, comfort yeah. zone. Oh, Did you get you a nap? Yeah, sort of. Did you get you a nap? Sort of. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> so yeah, it's really just, I mean, putting your nose to the grindstone mm -hmm. and doing it. And it does take a lot of sacrifices. And sometimes it's really uncomfortable. It's very scary. Yeah. Um, getting here, uh, I kept on telling Meg when we were getting ready to leave, uh, I don't know what life is going to look like on the other side, mm -hmm. but I know what it's not going to look like. It's mm -hmm. not going to look like this this nightmare that we've been living for the past few years. Right. And it hasn't. It, it hasn't, <laughs> it hasn't looked been, like that at all. It's been wonderful. Because we made the decision to, to change it. Yep. All right, so I think we're going to wrap it up. That was the majority of the questions. Um, we, we got a lot of the same question, just yeah. worded different. Yeah, we did. But I hope that answered a lot of you guys' questions. Hope it inspired you maybe a little bit for your own plans or jumping into getting mm -hmm. your, own, your own homestead. Um, everybody lives a different life and I think that's important to remember yeah. that one person's life looks different from another person's life and your life doesn't have to look like ours or like anybody mm -hmm. else's. Um, just do your life in your own way, your homestead in your own way and just get out there and do it. So, we're going to sign off? Yeah? She's like, I am not awake. I'm not awake at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> we hope you guys have a very awesome rock and start to the new year. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.